this is my hands-on first look when it comes to Mac OS 15 Sequoia. To save you some time, only two MacBooks have been discontinued and those are the 2019 and 2018 MacBook Air. Unfortunately, in the current update that I have, the most exciting feature that's coming to Mac OS 15 is not yet available, the iPhone mirroring feature. But if you open up Finder and search for iPhone mirroring, you can see this shows up and it's an app. If you double tap, it won't open. And even though I was able to pin it to the dock and try to open it, it doesn't open. At this point in time, this is a feature that's soon to be made available when it comes to Mac OS 15. Another thing that hasn't changed with this update has to do with the system settings. Yes, it's still called system settings and not system preferences. That's a thing of the past. But like the previous update, we are able to adjust this window vertically. But when it comes to horizontal adjustment, you aren't able to do that window snapping that has always been available on microsoft computers is now here in mac os 15 sequoia but because apple didn't want to say the phrase windows they called it tiles if you drag and drop a window in in a specific corner it's very hard and kind of finicky to get right but it's supposed to give you the corner or a section of the screen where you can drag and drop the window if i drag it to this corner of the screen it only fills this section if I drag it to the top, then it wants to open a new desktop. But then if I drag it here, then it fills the whole screen. But in order for me to drag it and make it a quarter of the screen, it's really hard to get it to do that. So if you press and hold on this move and resize window, you have the ability to choose which side. And if you have more than one application open, or even with one application, you have more options to be able to do tiles with it. So if you press and hold on this resize, bar you have the option to resize it to the left or if you hold you have the option to then again resize it to the right like this and you can see the application just takes the half right side of the screen if you hold again you have the option to just set it up and you have the option to also be able to have it on the bottom end of the screen if you have two applications that you want to pin you can always press and hold like that and now the two applications are like tiled perfectly side by side but now at the same time if you want to add three applications you select this section there and now you can see the three applications that it's tiled here if i wanted let's say the recent for example i would just have to select it and you can see it replaces chrome if i go back to chrome you can see how it places notes and now if I go to the finder tab you can see how you can seamlessly switch between those three but then because now it allows you to have more than uh, three windows you can choose this option that will have four different applications running tiled simultaneously at the same time as you can see right here so now if I want to pause this video I can pause it if I want to do something here in finder I can do that if I want to look up notes or read a website or zoom out and read resize it it's something that can be done at the same time you also have shortcut options that you can do so if you press shift function and control you have the option to manipulate two windows like this and if you want to just manipulate one of the windows you can press function and control and you'll be able to just manipulate the one application right there and you can move it left to right like this keep in mind that if you have a smaller display screen then this is definitely going to be more of a challenge but then if you have an external screen that you want to put things on then you can always do like what i'm doing right now safari has been updated you can see it's version 8 18.0 and this is the corresponding current build number according to apple safari now offers four hours more of battery life when you are video streaming and they refer to safari as the fastest browser so i guess they are also taking a hint at it being faster than chrome if you open up any different websites and it has some information that it can be summarized you'll be able to see that here soon and for example if you visit like a website that is for hotels and you're trying to book something it will automatically show you an icon here that you can click and show you the location of the direction of where that hotel is and at the same time it can give you a summary of tv shows quick links music and so on if you visit a website just like this that supports reading mode you can see here you have the ability to change the background theme i think this color here 
looks pretty good this gray and at the same time you have the ability to change the font right here and now you can read without having too much eye strain in safari settings if you go to where it says passwords you can see now it prompts you to open the new passwords application that we'll soon be looking into if you visit in a website that has video for example such as youtube and you play any picture when it's the video is playing you can see this smart object right here will give you the ability to have this option that says video viewer and if you click on it once it brings the video as front and center but then if you want if you don't want to have the video in your face or as the at the forefront you can right click on it and if you want to get media stats such as bandwidth and so on you can do that but then if you select this option that says enter picture in picture like this you can see the video is playing in the corner right here and you can continue to browse YouTube and be able to put this window on either side of the screen wherever you want while the video plays you can now continue to read the comments or you know reply some comments while seeing the video and what it talks about if you open up facetime you're going to see that the icons and the names that are associated with the different contacts that you have have been made bold and the name or contact card seems to pop more at the same time you can see when you click on your video effects in facetime you have the ability to add background and if i was to switch off my background this is how it looks if i was to turn it on this is how it looks if i click on this picture right here you can see I can choose different background colors and if I choose black this is how it looks so these are presets colors and if I go to this section right here you can see I can choose preset backgrounds by Apple and I believe they are adding more as time moves by and now if I want to add my own picture I can click here and for example start to talk about you know watch OS and some other changes that this has to offer With Within messages, you can see if you right click on any text, instead of the preset reactions that you could set right here, you now have different emojis. And if you click here, it gives you the whole list and you can see, you can go all the way basically on the whole emoji keyboard and select a different reaction that you want to send. And then it will attach it corresponding to that same message that you reacted to. If you've typed something, you can now right click on it and now you have the option to make it bold. And if you click on it again, you can use italics, underline or strike through. Alternatively, if you press on your keyboard, command plus B and then type anything, it makes it bold. If you press command plus I, you can see it makes it italic and if you also co press command plus U then it's underlined and you can see everything that I do right here once you've typed your message out and you want to send it you can now press the plus icon and be able to send message effect something that the iPhone has always heard and you can see you can choose from a different preset of uh, effects and you get a preview of the effect similar to what the iPhone has and this is something that that's pretty late to the Mac, but it's good to have as well. Mac OS 15 also adds support for tap back. So if you right click on any message, you can see tap back details. And if you click on it, you can see you get these reactions. And if you want to select more than what you see right here, you can always click here and it will give you all the different emojis that you can use for tap back as well. If you've typed something and you want to send it later, you can always click on the plus icon and then click where it says send later. And now this gives you the ability to be able to choose the date and time and set your message as a schedule and it will be sent at that specific time and date. When you go to your application section in Mac OS 15, you are going to see a few and minor applications that have been rearranged for example you can see we have a new passwords application so when you open it like this it does need a password or fingerprint to authenticate and you're going to be greeted by a new pop-up screen once you've authenticated it will say easily save and fill passwords with autofill secure encryption since these passwords are end-to-end -end encrypted and you have seamless synchronization you can use your password on mac on iphone on ipad on the Vision Pro and on Windows PCs using iCloud for Windows. So once you click continue at this point in time, 
I, as of my testing, this is not working on iOS 18. Import function is only working on macOS, but this is an issue that can be resolved easily. And I'm sure Apple is going to do that pretty soon. So if you have like uh, passwords, verification codes and notes from other password managers to use with passwords, then you can import those over. And now I don't have a file to import. So you can always do that later again. And it's recommended you turn on notifications so that if there's a password that has issues then they will be able to prompt you so if you click continue you can see all your passwords right here and some it won't be able to pull the app icon or the site icon but you can see right here if it's not able to do that then they put a letter like a d or e corresponding to the first name or the website name right here. Something to keep in mind is that if you choose to autofill your passwords, then your password is automatically going to be ported over into this passwords application. And since this is synchronized between all your different devices, then you don't have to worry about having to manually add it it to automatically sync and within this password application you are able to be able to do the following which is a whole lot from the passwords the calculator app that you see right here has also been redesigned you can see when you open it up it looks more modern and at the same time if you click here you have the option to select the scientific calculator or the programmable calculator which is something that's new and within this programmable calculator you can choose to hide or show binary and if you go to the view tab right here you can show thousand separator and again if you want to just go to the basic one you can select it right there and if you want to show open math notes you can click there and now it will be able to allow you to do math within notes as well speaking of notes you can see right here if you write any mathematical formula or calculation that you want to perform and you put the equal sign you can see it automatically highlights the answer for you so the answer to this is four notes added an option that allows you to be able to see recordings and you'll be able to see live audio transcript if i was to record my recording mic will cut out but this is something that's new and that has been added and at the same time if you have text that you want to highlight you can click on it right here go to font and under this I can also do like spelling and grammar check as well and if I go to font I have the ability to highlight it and now you can see it's highlighted with my highlight color that I've selected and at the same time notes also supports collapsible text as well that you can use in order to save space or keep things that are in order mac os 15 also supports the following games that you see on your screen right here and the one that's highlighted and shiny is the one that has been recently added right here you can see we also have a brand new tips application and when you open it up you can see it's already preloaded with mac os sequoia and right here you can see it's kind of a clean application right here you can see your different devices and you can get help with setting up your apple watch as well on this app and if you open up system preferences it's now always defaulting to the general tab which is more of a normal approach unlike before where it was defaulting to the appearance and at the same time if you go to the general tab you can see that this a drop and handoff color icon has been updated and at the same time if you look at the Apple K and warranty the icon color here has been sort of dimmed out it's not as red as before the Wi-Fi section page here has sort of been refreshed a little bit to give it a more modern look and once you've selected your Wi-Fi you now have the option to rotate your Wi-Fi address and rotating your Wi-Fi address helps reduce tracking by changing your Wi-Fi address at various times tracking can happen when your address always appears the same to other devices and people using the same network so if you want enhanced security this is a feature that you would want to turn on and then of course click ok now under the screensaver or the wallpaper tab right here you can see with mac OS sequoia we got the dynamic wallpaper right here and it actually says mac os beta so it doesn't say sequoia yet so hopefully that's an update that's coming soon and you can see here for the 40th anniversary of mac os we have these vintage um, i'll select the secondary monitor so that you can see how these vintage mac os screensavers and wallpaper 
first look and from time to time it always changes which is something that's good so you can see it has an animation once you select it which is cool and you can also select it for your screensaver as well if this is something that you are into under accessibility and audio you can now choose more selection here from different background sounds so now you have fire night and stream and if you want to download those you can always click on the download arrow right here and then you'll be able to have the background sound selected and after that you can choose the volume or you can adjust it on your keys on your mac the photos application has been updated i don't really use it that much on mac os but you can see we now have more tabs right here such as trips which was something that wasn't existing before and some of the sorting here has been improved as well to make it uniform with some of the updates that ios 18 received when it comes to photos some other changes that are here within maps you have the ability to save hikes for offline access and if you are in a region where this is supported you have the ability to create your own walking and hiking route and at the same time you have topographic maps of all 63 u.s national parks so if you are in the u.s this is something that you can take advantage of when it comes to sound and audio as well as the music you now have the ability and the support for voice isolation if you are using the airpods pro there's also very minor icon changes and sub menu changes that have been slightly improved within music which is something that's good and of course mac os 15 has implemented hands-free with siri just like it's been done on ios 18 something that's major that's going to be coming to mac os and ios as well as ipad os is apple intelligence so this is a feature that's yet to be coming you notice it says coming in beta this fall and it's going to be available in english for a start and then it's going to be made i believe first in the u.s and then to more countries and languages after that but in case if you're wondering whether your device is going to be supported then you can see the compatible devices so for the iphone it's kind of unfortunate because you need an iphone 15 pro max or 15 pro and later in order to get apple intelligence compatible and basically when it comes to mac you need a mac that is on m1 or later and for the ipads these are the ipads that support it so basically that's about it when it comes to mac os 15 sequoia this is a brief overview there's going to be more features and changes of course with the different updates and betas that are going to come out and some features like this are to be coming so definitely do hit like and subscribe so that you stay updated with the latest when it comes to mac os 15 sequoia